The internet is a vast network of powerful computers and billions of messages are sent via the internet every day. Each message is broken down into smaller chunks called packets so they can travel faster across the internet. Deep packet inspection technology enables the computers which run the internet to read the content of messages as they travel. And it's not just email, it's browsing, search history, calls, social media activity and the websites we visit that can be captured by deep packet inspection. We don't know when it's happening and nobody really knows who's doing it. It could be internet service providers, governments or law enforcement agencies. Deep packet inspection is a bit like a postman opening your letters, reading what they say and maybe even changing their content before delivering them. We asked a range of experts for their opinions on both the benefits and the limitations of deep packet inspection. Deep packet inspection has been central to the security system and structure of the internet because the internet service providers need to know is that nasty stuff coming at us. It's used to protect against malicious intent, um, spam email, um, denial of service attacks. Is it a hacker trying to disrupt the uh, servers on the internet? Is it a cyber criminal? Is it also a material which is just so obnoxious and illegal that we should intercept it? One has been able to create algorithms which can quite successfully detect an issue such as commercial sexual exploitation of children. There are algorithms that search for specific keywords. They may indicate funds related to child pornography, to terrorism, to other kinds of crimes, but also illegal copyright infringement. It is part of the dangers of the packet inspection that it opens a window for malicious attacks such as introducing viruses or distortions of the email you sent. There are certain governments around the world that will want to look at everything rather than to look at something if there was reasonable suspicion that something unpleasant was going on. Another example might be a country restricting the websites that its citizens can see because when you type in certain keywords, when you put certain things in your email, the country just blocks it and stops you getting to it. In the world today there is a huge loophole which is the United States legislation which allows for intrusion into communications which cross the border of the United States and when so much of the internet traffic in the world goes one way or the other through the US, for instance, simply by using a Gmail or Yahoo address. This means that a lot of our correspondence already now is subject to very few privacy protections. So you as an individual may say, well, I don't really care. It's only my emails. My emails aren't that interesting. But who do you work for? And wouldn't somebody else be interested in having access to your personal emails about who it is you work for? We have to start realizing that the threats are not this simplistic, oh, the, the, the shady character on the street who's trying to mug you, or the evil national security agency of your own country. <laughs> it's much richer fabric of threats than that. It is your competitor. It is a private investigator. It is a journalist who decides all of a sudden you are worthy of attention. And then it is the foreign state. I find deep packet inspection a very intrusive technology because it really goes into the content of my confidential communication and that's why I believe it should be behind a strict firewall. Not used to screen all telecommunications, all email traffic, but really to target suspected individuals where there already is reasonable suspicion that the person is involved as a perpetrator in serious crimes. To me, the important thing is transparency. I don't know who's looking at my information. I know somebody is because I know that's the world we live in and these technologies are available. 
but who is it exactly and therefore what decisions are being made based on my information is something that I'm not aware of. Once your information has been accessed and say if it was for a criminal investigation and say the criminal investigation led to nowhere because they realized that you were not the criminal, they should let you know. Some of the arguments of the security services will be that we can only find out what unpleasant stuff is going on if we're monitoring everything to check it. Deep packet inspection is the doorway through which you can do all forms of surveillance when it comes to our communications. So if you put this mighty box, these black boxes into a telephone company or into an ISP and say, okay, well don't worry, this black box is only doing this. It takes very little to say to that black box, now start doing more. And so if we allow the lawmakers to pass laws that say, we shall install these black boxes. But don't worry, the law also says they can only use it in this very specific circumstance. The fact that those black boxes are now there allows the next guy, the next government, to say, well, let's start using it for something else. With a tsunami of information, citizens, consumers, have a responsibility to protect their information in that world as much as companies have certain responsibilities and government have responsibilities. And the three different actors need to cooperate with each other and be very transparent with each other about how we're going to navigate our way through this world. But I don't think any one of those actors can just sit there with its arms folded and say to the other ones, it's all down to you, you've got to behave in a certain way.